While editing my videos, I noticed a very faint low distortion on one of my Yamaha HS7 monitors. It would disappear if I turned them up, but since I only used them at very low volumes, I had to find out what was wrong. They are 18 months old and still under warranty, but after the service centre said they may charge me for the repair if they feel I abuse them or charge me to return them, I felt uneasy about sending them in under warranty. I felt like they were going to make me pay either way, so I may as well purchase a new driver for around £50. So here I'm going to try and show the low level distortion that I can hear. <laughs> So initially I'm just going to use a 3mm Allen key and break these bolts loose. There's six of them. I can then safely use one of these electric drivers just to whiz the six screws out. Once we've removed this black plastic bezel, we will be greeted by another six fasteners. And this time we need a posi drive screwdriver. And just take those out. So I'm just going to check that's the right size, which it is. So I'll pop that into my little Panasonic driver. And in no time at all, we'll have those six screws out. And the last one. So we've got to be a bit careful here. Because we've got to lift this speaker up. And we definitely don't want to slip with a screwdriver and put a hole in it. Now bear in mind, there's two wires underneath and a black and a red one and that, the red one is positive and the black one is negative now make sure you don't break that white plastic rectangle because that's quite fragile i'll show you it now so here it is colored in that's the little rectangle which is very fragile so we've got our red and black wire there which we now need to use a pair of pliers to carefully prise off okay so i've got some small electronic pliers here now as you can see they're very tight so you really do want to be careful not to break that piece of plastic so that's the positive off which is a bit wider now notice the negative is narrower and that's easier to come off so that's looking good now looking over the speaker I can't see any obvious problems all the glue still seems intact and where is this speaker made? So it's made in Indonesia and it's rated at 4 ohms. I'm wondering whether there's a small bit of debris or something from the manufacturing process that's got trapped in there with the voice coil and which is causing it because these speakers certainly have not been abused. Now I'm just going to put a multimeter on there purely out of interest to just see what the ohmage is of these coils obviously it's rated at 4 ohms so we'll just see how close it is to actually 4 ohms so neg on, pos on and what have we got? about 3.5 ohms, 3.4 I guess that's close to 4 sort of with intolerances maybe so what I'll do now is just pop that speaker to one side and then I'm going to take my fully working one um, because what I need to know is whether it's the actual driver unit or the amplifier inside that's at fault. So if I take this drive unit out of this one and put it into the other cabinet, I should then find out where the actual problem lies. So with the drive units removed from the speaker cabinets, we may as well take this opportunity just to have a look inside. So with a bit of shaky camera action, we'll have a quick peek and see what we can say. Because obviously there's an active amplifier in there. And what can we say? In focus, we can see a big transformer at the bottom. A couple of 4,700 microfarad capacitors there. A heat sink. And a tube. And we've got a yellow and a blue wire going to the tweeter. So it all looks quite tidy in there. Quality seems good. So I'm just going to check the resistance of the voice coil in this drive unit as well and see what we get. 
presumably it should be the same. And it is. 3.4, 3.5 ohms. So at least that's the same. All right, so we can now fix this drive unit into the old housing or the other housing. So positive on the wider terminal and then the negative, the narrower terminal and now we can fix that back in. Now I'll only just put the second set of fasteners in um, just to see what result we get. Now I'm just going to check here because those sets of screws are actually offset. So you don't want to put the screws in where the outer screws need to go. So I'll speed this all up. So when we listen to this speaker now, I'm hoping that it will actually sound okay. That way I know at least it's not the internal amplifier and it was just the drive unit. So here goes. Now that's sounding okay. So it does look like it was the drive unit. So with the suspicious drive unit now in the other case, we should better hear the distortion, and we can. A slight reverberation there. Sometimes it's interesting to see the construction of a loudspeaker, so I've added the following photographs from an old speaker I previously dissected a few years ago. Hopefully this gives some insight to the different parts that make up a basic speaker. So here's my cutaway of a speaker. There you can see the voice coil and the suspension, dust cap and the magnet, the speaker cone and the cone suspension ring, the magnet, the bottom plate, the terminals and the chassis. And here's a close-up showing the voice coil and a very close-up shot there. And the voice coil removed from the magnet. Thank you for watching and hope you found this short video of interest.